Hello, everyone, and welcome to the New York Empoleon's quarterfinal matchup of the UBL Season 3. Now, you may have noticed we didn't have a Week 10 upload, didn't have a Week 10 battle. Um, my opponent, Hera, um, had to end up forfeiting his last two weeks of the season, which meant that we actually qualified for the playoffs officially via a win by forfeit. Now, because we only needed a 1-0 win to qualify at all, uh, the 3-0 guaranteed win there was actually enough to guarantee us the spot. So we did get a win that way. Um, but now we are here. We, I believe, ended up as the sixth seed when all the dust settled. And we are currently playing Die. Uh, die it tight. Oh, man. What a what a battle that was. If only I didn't have to face him in the regular season, I could have used my tech in the, re in the postseason for the first time. Because some of it was really, really good. And I still think it actually has a really good matchup against his team. I didn't bring a B team or anything like that. So a lot of my tech is similar. But I did change some moves and coverage. So that if he is expecting me to be exactly the same coverage. Um, he's going to have another thing coming for, so for certain mons. Now the first Pokemon. Well, let's go through his team first. Uh, his team is Landorus T, Latios, Bisharp, Decidueye, Jolteon, Primarina, Salazzle. Gigalith, Stoutland, Duosion, and Mega Pinsir, uh, with Landers T being his only possible Z user. So, we just faced this team in like week 7 or something like that, I think it was, and uh, we managed to pick up a win there. But that doesn't mean his team's not really scary. One of the Pokemon he does struggle most to deal with is a specially defensive Slowbro, um, and this actually has the added benefit of really just hard countering Primarina. Um, Energy Ball is a three-hit KO unless he's Choice Specs, um, and even then, if he's Choice Specs but like not modest for some reason, if he's running some other nature, uh, then it may still be a three-hit KO. Uh, and Nasty Plot, Salazzle can uh, two-hit KO, but if I switch in on the Nasty Plot, then I'm fine, and without the Nasty Plot, it's a four-hit KO uh, with Sludge Wave let alone fire coverage, not doing anything with an Assault Vest. So we are rocking Max Special Defense and an Assault Vest. Um, same exact thing as last time with Scald, Psy Shock, and Ice Beam, but I switched out Zap Cannon for Seismic Toss, which for a little bit more reliable uh, damage. Um, potentially, if he is boosting, uh, being able to just be able to get guaranteed damage on something like a low HP Duosion uh, would be incredibly useful, or just getting some chip damage onto something that... Honestly, he has no switch into Scald, except for Duosion if he does bring it. Um... And so Seismic Toss getting guaranteed damage on that no matter what, so it can't just boost up on Slowbro, is actually incredibly useful. Next up, we have Skarmory, which this week I actually took off the Iron Head and put on the Defog here, and you'll see that I switched out Cryogonal as well, so that's why I decided to have removal here, because I need it. Roost, Stealth Rock, Defog, Whirlwind. Figured that was good enough. Uh, this is one of the first times I'm ever running a Pokemon that doesn't have any offensive coverage, but that doesn't mean that it isn't a threat. Uh, it can switch it on the Gigalith, get rid of his rocks as many times as I want, and set up Stealth Rocks on that for free um and then whirlwind the gigalith out so it can't just stall me forever additionally this is a pretty good uh soft check to things like the mega pincer uh so whirlwinding that away um if salazzle comes in i think he's gonna sub and i still have my sturdy potentially i can just go for a whirlwind and get that out uh things like that uh landorus t doesn't really do anything to this so Physically defensive, Skarmory, specially defensive Slowbro, coming this week to soft check his stuff. Now you'll notice Jolteon is still a huge major problem. Slowbro can take a Thunderbolt if it needs to, but it doesn't Oko back with anything. So I do have to watch out for the Jolteon, uh, unless my Charizard has Mega Evolved. And this is an offensive Charizard this week. So last time I brought defensive Charizard uh, with Will-O-Wisp and Roost and stuff like that. This time I'm going straight offensive, Dragon Dance, Thunder Punch, Dragon Claw, and Flareless. Thunder Punch is mostly there for the Primarina. Otherwise, my dual stabs can basically kill everything on his team. Uh, and if I can get myself to plus one, uh, plus two, if I'm worried about like Scarf Latios, for instance, uh, or Scarf Salazzle, then... Uh, or, or even just Stoutland and Sand, then uh, we're in good shape. And plus two should be basically killing everything with Dragon Claw. With a couple of small exceptions that can survive that, like the Gigalith at full HP, um, but that doesn't take. It still takes a huge chunk of damage from plus two Dragon Claw. So, Charizard getting set up does make for a pretty good win con. He has really no switch into it except for the Primarina, which is why I'm running the Thunder Punch. Thunder Punch in Electric Terrain, which I didn't bring Coco last time, uh, does allow me to basically kill uh, everything on his team that would otherwise be able to survive Charizard stabs, aka Primarina. Um, now, this is a Choice Scarf Coco with enough speed to outspeed a uh, Stoutland in Sand. Um, U-Turn, Dazzling Gleam, Hidden Power, Ice, and Thunderbolt are what I'm going to be rocking out with this week. Scarf does make me a little bit more prediction-laden and a little bit more uh, forced to make reads, but U-Turn is very, very free. I wanted to run Volt Switch, but the two mons that he has that can 
come in on Volt Switch do come in on Coco a lot uh, in my testing, so... Lander is T, which has to be afraid of a Hidden Power Ice prediction. If he doesn't bring the Jolteon, which I'd be shocked at and pretty stoked about, honestly, then uh, then U-Turn is entirely great against Lando T. Um, but I can also run Hidden Power Ice or go for that on a good prediction against his Landorus, try to catch that, do maybe 70% um, through a Yachi Berry or something like that. And since I'm Scarf, be able to outspeed it anyway. And next up, we do have the Licky Licky coming back, uh, which is incorrectly gen unfortunately um <laughs> which is going to be uh interesting i did not want to run sword dance and belly drum i wanted to run sword dance and wish i can't put wish on this licky licky uh so i will have to go grab a different one but i'll do that in a second and i'll show you guys that licky licky when it's ready so i'll cut to that in a moment we'll talk about that later and next up we are going to be rocking out with my scolipede which has switched out protect for rock slide and it switched out life orb for koba berry um in order to take a quick attack from mega pincer that he may not be expecting me to survive and be able to dish out a rock slide back um that he, i didn't have last time swords dance is still there along with the other two moves that it, he has really no switch ins for on his entire team um and that is going to be the team this week so be right back with that licky licky that i've decided to use on last minute because i'm about to battle him right now and we'll get this battle going at least it's something new that he hasn't seen before so heal bell wish earthquake and ice punch that's what we're gonna rock out with it's still very very specially defensive um mostly as a jolteon switch in and uh wish is really helpful just in general to help my team stay healthy um especially if rocks are up since i can wish and then go to zard take 50 percent and then uh come back to full anyway that's the team we're gonna be rocking this week not ideal potentially um but we'll see what how it goes thank you all for watching this team builder part and i'll see you guys back here in a second with the battle <sighs> all right everyone welcome back there is a non-zero chance that i just realized like right now that this is the last battle i ever do in gen 7 wi-fi leagues which is crazy i really hope it's not um that's exactly the same team he brought last time but he brought bisharp over salazzle which is fine my team is so weak to fire that like that's fine with me. I mean, I don't know what Bisharp's going to do here. Uh, he's got Decidueye, Bisharp, Landorus, Stoutland, uh, Gigalith, and Jolteon. Meanwhile, I've got uh, what you see on the screen right there. And I think Coco's really safe as a lead here. Um, because I think he's going to lead Jolteon. The problem is then I just have to take a hit with my... Uh, Licky Licky. Uh, flat out have to take a hit with it. Which isn't great. Um, and he could be running defensive Jolteon, for instance, with Toxic to catch that switch in that he knows is coming, since it, it will have to switch in there. Um, the alternative being a switch, a lead with my... Uh, he doesn't have the Mega Pincer, which is really interesting as well. Because that thing just wrecks me. But I think Coco is a, is a pretty safe lead here. Um, all things considered, if it's not Jolteon, then I'll be pretty happy. If it is Jolteon, I don't have a better lead except for Charizard, uh, which is questionably better, because if he is running a, a Toxic Protect Wish set, then he will be annoyingly hard to stall out with Charizard, uh, since he's Toxic on the Dragon Dance, and then go from there, unless I just decided to Flare Blitz uh, again. And Charizard does look really, really good in this matchup. I do think this is going to be a stand Stoutland this time, um, not, not the Intimidate it was last time. Um, and Scoot is the Jolteon, yeah, that's, that's the obvious lead here. We, we knew that was coming, uh, it wasn't surprising at all. Now, if he outspeeds me, then we get really good information that he's Scarfed. Uh, and he doesn't get really good information about my set. Dazzling Gleam is pretty free against the team that he brought, since Bisharp doesn't actually resist. Uh, and... Takes 60%. Uh, Jolteon is not quite taking 50% from a Dazzling Beam. So I'm just going to U-turn here. Um, I don't really lose much. He could just Volt Switch. That is free. Um, he has the ability to just fire that off. I don't have a ground type right now. Um, we're seeing that does about 25%. So he's got a little bulk investment since that should do a bit more if he has none. Um, but my play is every time just to go out into Licky Licky here. Um... And he didn't bring his Salazzle because it was just set up fodder for the Licky Licky last time. And he just goes straight for the T-Bolt here, uh, which we're going to see is going to do a decent chunk of damage. Um, but not actually even to a KO or anything like that. And I can show him the wish that he didn't see last time. Um, 
And because I have the heal bell, um, he could go for a toxic here. Um, a part of me thinks he's not staying in, though. Since he sees that that doesn't to a KO. Um, although I could just EQ. Because if he goes Lando, then I can just wish next turn. Uh, unless he fires off ground EMZ. Although I just go Skarmory if he goes Lando. And then I have a little bit more recovery. So I'm just going to Earthquake. If he Toxics, he Toxics. Uh, he just Volt Switches. Okay. So we know he's not Choice in any way, which is good. Uh, and if he goes Lando, he goes Lando. Uh, if he goes Decidueye, which is probably more likely, then I at least get damage off. Um, and that thing's not taking me out either. Um, although maybe I should have taken an extra second and predicted that Decidueye was going to come in at this point. Uh, and maybe just wished. Skywalker, that is Lando. It's unfortunate that I didn't try to predict that at all. Uh, and wish there or anything like that. But I do have Skarmory in the back, so I can just go straight into that. Um, we'll see the Earthquake fires off. Uh, thinking he would stay in there. He didn't. Um, there's a non-zero chance he just wants to kill Licky Licky because he saw how much work he did last time. And I'm just going to go into Skarmory here. He could U-turn. That's also an option, but I have the Rocky Helmet. So I can scout out if he wants to do that. Um, and Licky Licky still has really good use to me left. Jolteon's a problem, but... 25% off Jolteon's pretty nice, and I have no intention of firing off Thunderbolts with my Coco until Jolteon and Landorus are gone, since it is Scarfed. So I do have that to watch out for. Um, but Skarm can come in here. He goes for the Gravity. He does have the Gravity. This is a big problem for my team. Uh, gravity Lando did prove to be easily the best uh, the best matchup against my team. Um, yeah, I, I saw this in prep. And he can just go for an Earthquake right now, which does a lot of damage uh, to my entire team. I can Roost. It won't recover all of the HP that he's doing in damage. I can also just Whirlwind and get him out into something else. Um, or I can just set up Rocks. Although he didn't bring the Mons the Rocks are super useful for, but the Chip is just... It's Chip. I mean, Chip is Chip. But then I basically lose Skarmory at this point. Although, again, he doesn't have the Mons that Skarmory is necessary to beat. Um, but I think my best play is going to be just to Whirlwind out the Landorus and potentially lose my Skarm. If it's Gigalith that comes in, I'm in great shape. Uh, if it's Decidueye that comes in, I'm also in pretty good shape. So I'm going to just Whirlwind here. Uh, he does go for the Earthquake. We'll see how offensive he is. Um, and that shows... So 172 to 68 does 102. That's not adamant. That's not even max attack. And that is Stoutland that comes in. Uh, that could, especially with Electric Terrain up, that can definitely kill me. Wild Charge. Wild Charge will definitely kill me. Uh... Actually, Wild Charge may not kill me. Superpower won't. So if he's... Oh, in Electric Train it will. In Electric Train it'll kill me. I never get good Whirlwinds. I should stop running it, <laughs> for being honest. Um, but I got his, his thing out, uh, which is great. And I'm going to Roost here and scout out. Do you have the Wild Charge? Do you go for it? Thunderfang. Does that kill? Electric Train, it does kill. Okay, so uh, why do I never get good whirlwinds is the great question of the hour. Uh, so we're going to say Stoutland kills Skarmory with Thunderfang. Does that? I mean, in Electric Terrain, Max Stack Adamant is a roll to kill. Uh, so I don't get a ton of information out of that. How much do you do to a Charizard? Because you're not in sand right now, which means Charizard can come in and kind of just hit you. You were clearly in sand rush this time. You were not intimidate. We saw that. I should mark it down. Uh, Stoutland. I don't know if you're bulky or not. I don't know if you're bulky or not. And after Flare Blitz recoil return will kill... Uh, you might be banded. Slowbro could be my best option to just click Scald, since the terrain is gone now. Uh, so 
resistance, even Choice Banded Thunderfang. Oh, that's mega Slowbro. My regular Slowbro. There's a two hit KO on my Slowbro set. Returns also a two hit KO. So I think Slowbro is my best option because if it does come to pass that I need to do something, I can always switch it out. Um, and I'm just going to go for a Scald here. Maybe get a burn on something. Uh, basically, nothing on his team wants to take a burn. Jolteon would be his best switch in here. Um, now, getting Charizard in and Mega Evolving may have been a better play, but I feel like this thing's going to have some kind of crazy coverage for my Charizard. So, just please get a burn on literally whatever. Just, just one burn on literally whatever would be fine. If he's Quick Feet, fine. I'm not too worried about it. Um, no burn. No burn. Slow, bro. Uh, Jolteon. Choice Specs Jolteon, which we know he's not even Specs. We actually know he's not a boosting item at all. Uh, Jolteon can 3-hit KO my Slowbro right now. And I could potentially kill it with a Psy Shock here, which is doing a lot more than Scald. So I'm actually going to go for the Psy Shock. He could Volt Switch uh, and then go into Bisharp, which would be a crazy play. He does Volt Switch. Uh, we're seeing that it's going to do not that much. He's going to see that I'm Assault Vested again, uh, which is what I was last time, too, when I faced him. Uh, is that Bisharp? Did he make the play? All right. So I'm playing poorly. Um, there's no denying that. I'm playing very, very poorly. Uh, Bisharp's here. Skarmory's dead. I have to go Charizard because he's going to set up. He could potentially set up Stealth Rocks. Uh, what does Bisharp do to a, Scar a Charizard? Although it could have the Sucker Punch here. I think he's going to knock off. I mean, that's the, the most obvious play to me. <sighs> it's Knock off still does 50% if he's Life Orbed. And then Sucker Punch is being able is killing me from there, potentially. He could also Pursuit. I think this thing learns Pursuit. Does Pursuit kill me? Uh, yeah, Pursuit could potentially kill from here. Only if I switch out, though. Does, per does Bisharp even learn Pursuit? Like, I'm not even sure if it learns Pursuit. It does learn Pursuit. And he's going to click it here, if he has it. 100%. Because it takes out Slowbro. And at that point, I lose the game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay, and I'm going to click Scald. He's going to Pursuit. He substitutes. So he doesn't have Pursuit, or chooses not to go for it. Uh, knockoff kills, straight up. Knockoff kills, straight up. Let's see what item you are. Leftovers? Okay, so we know you're not Life Orb. But I'm actually going to switch out at this point, thinking he probably doesn't have Pursuit, and he's going to go for a knockoff. Um, and I have no switches to Jolteon anymore. So my only chance of winning is Charizard setting up and sweeping. Um, but if he has a substitute up, then I then that is a literal impossibility. Uh, but I can't sack Slowbro. I can sack Licky Licky and still win the game. Um, but I can't sack slow, bro. So he's going to knock off here. There's no doubt in my mind he's going to knock off here. Um, because I was, I was showed that I was willing to stay in, and he does. Um, he knocks off my leftovers. I have to click, well, I can click Ice Punch. It, well, no, that doesn't break the sub. I have to break his sub here. So I'm going to Earthquake if he, uh... Yeah, I'm going to Earthquake. If he substitutes, then I break it. If he knock offs, then he kills me, and it is what it is. Um, so Bisharp kills Licky Licky with knockoff. And he's back to, like, near full health. Now Zard can come in, take the one hit it needs to take. Uh, I can't Dragon Dance or anything. I just have to click Flare Blitz, uh, which means Gigalith can come in for free. 
Or I can double out at this point, but I really want my Charizard Mega Evolved, if we're being honest. So I'd rather just click, like, Flare Blitz, kill this, potentially. Uh, but he's not going to stay in. He's going to go Gigalith. I don't have the Earthquake. There's no, there's no deny, there's no way he doesn't go Gigalith here. So, do I play that? But I want my Charizard Mega. I mean, I do. Because then otherwise, I go into anything, and his Gigalith will just set up Stealth Rocks. It doesn't matter what I go into. And D-Claw's not a 2 KO on the Gigalith, either. Even at plus 1. I mean, I have to click Flare Blitz. I don't have a choice. Um, even though I know he's not... He stayed in. This surprises me. This surprises me greatly. Now, last time I did run a defensive Zardex, so maybe he's expecting me to do that again. Um, I mean, even with an Aka Bear, that thing isn't surviving, but we know it's leftovers, so Bisharp's dead. So, Charizard X kills Bisharp with Flare Blitz. Um, and now he goes into his Landorus. Which we know isn't scarfed. Oops. It's the wrong Landorus. Flare Blitz doesn't take you out. Um, you you might just Earthquake here. I mean, you probably do. Um, but Slowbro... Charizard is less useful to me than Slowbro. So I can just click Flare Blitz, and there's a 10% chance that I just burn him. It's a possibility. So I'm going to do that, uh, and uh, well, I won't survive anything, burning him would be really nice. Doesn't burn. Never burn. The Scald not burning was sad. I mean, even if it's just the Jolteon, so Landorus T kills Charizard X with Earthquake. Um, now I have my Scully, which can take a Z Fly, but cannot take a Z Earthquake. Actually can't even take a Z Fly with a Koba Berry. And Aqua Tail, based on the damage roll that did, probably doesn't kill. So I feel like I have to go Slowbro and click Scald here. Which is fine, because uh, Scald is super duper free against everything that isn't Jolteon. Although, again, with Jolteon gets 2 KO'd now by Scald where it's at. So, I'm just going to click Scald. Uh, he U-turns, that's fine. Did a lot. Now he goes Jolteon here. Now I still have... Uh, yeah, so Scald 2 KOs and Thunderbolt doesn't KO me. Um, so he's probably going to sack his Jolteon to get the damage off on my Slowbro. I don't think he's going to Volt Switch here. I think he's going to Thunderbolt. At which point I could go out into my Coco, eat a Thunderbolt from a Jolteon. I mean, what else is Jolteon going to do? Which is not even a 2 a KO. We know he's not Scarfed. Uh, and that keeps my Slowbro healthy for later, which I think I need it to be. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go out to Coco here. Uh, if he Volt Switches, that's really annoying. If he just Thunderbolts, then that's best case scenario. I just don't see him Volt Switching, though. I think he wants the damage. I don't think he can safely go into anything because he can't take a Scald. Yeah, there's the T-Bolt. And now I just U-turn for free. Because I don't know if he's going to let this thing die at this point. Since he doesn't really have another way to break Slowbro. Uh, although Stoutland still exists. D-Gleam is free. Bisharp is gone. Stoutland. Stoutland can take two. Can't take two Thunderbolts, though, if I can kill this in the Lando. Which I certainly can try. So I could just U-turn. I think I'm just going to U-turn here. Uh, let this... Okay, he's going to let his Jolteon die. That's really, really good. 
Uh, so Tapu Koko kills Jolteon with U-Turn. And if we can kill the Lando, then Thunderbolt can theoretically win me the game. Uh, Slowbro could come in. He's forced to go Decidueye at that point. Um, Leaf Blade's not killing, but nothing I do is going to do anything close to killing. So I'm going to go into my Scolipede here. Now he's going to go Lando when I do that. Um, or Gigalith. Okay. Um, which sets up a Sandstream. Okay. Aqua Tail's doing 50%. I don't think I have a choice but to go for it here. He's just going to attack me with like Stone Edge or something. So I'm just going to Aqua Tail. Um, I can't risk the Swords Dance and him missing Stone Edge. That's not worth it to me. Uh, Rock Blast. Okay. Get a two. Get a two. Get a two. Get a two. It doesn't kill. Come on. Just two. Just two. Just two. I don't get anything. Um, Alright. So Gigalith kills Scolipede with Rock Blast. Now I can go slow, bro. I can click Scald. Um, if he's Assault Vested, he can survive. Potentially. I can click Scald, though, if he goes Decidueye. I mean, I haven't gotten a burn yet. So this would be a good time for it. This would be a great time for it. Okay. So we're going to take, like, no damage from this. Toxic. Okay. Um, sure. Not great. Sand plus Toxic going to chip. Burn going to chip. Now I could make the hard read and go out into my Coco here. I don't think that's the best play. I think just clicking Scald again is my best play. If he switches out into Landorus, then I win the game, potentially. Uh, if he switches out into Decidueye, which is the better play in his in my mind, uh, then I'm in a really tough spot. Um, burn it. Burn it. Burn it. Of course not. Of course not. Why would I burn the thing that actually matters? Um, I have to stay in. And I don't know what I have to do to win the game. Because he kept his Gigalith alive, um, which means that he gets set up sand again. Um... Yeah, I've I've lost this game. There's no there's no coming back from that. Um, he goes for the leaf blade. I didn't get the burn, so it gets the kill. Uh, crits me anyway, probably. Yep, 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 yep. You know, if I'm gonna go out, one going out to a great friend, dies a great competitor, great friend of mine that I've made in the community. So shout out to him. If I'm gonna lose, I would rather lose to somebody I like and somebody that I hope will win the season. But beyond just that. How else would I go out than not burning most of my Scalds and getting the worst possible Whirlwind and I guess technically the second to worst possible Whirlwind because Jolteon could have come in. Um, but, uh, like, how well, and crit, getting crit on uh, Leaf Blades. Uh, like, how else, would I, how else would I go out, you know? And <laughs> so I'm not even, I'm not even going to say anything, you know? Good game to die. Uh, he had... He had the team to beat mine. I had a misgen on my misgen on my licky licky, uh, which caused me to to play it incorrectly. Uh, it's not how I would have played it probably if I had the the swords dance or the didn't have the heal bell um, or had the correct amount of EVs. Um, I definitely had some issues there, but that's life. Uh, that's the game we play. You play Pokemon, you expect to lose sometimes. Um, I again want die to win the season so if i don't win it i want him to win it um and i apologize if this comes off as a little bit melodramatic or a little bit over the top or even a little bit just like salty because it is it is sad it is potentially my last game that i'm not gonna play in uh ultra and ultra moon uh the situation wasn't great i i was super busy and so i asked i to play early and i have a rule against coming out of bed to go play a game but as you can tell i'm very tired and i was in bed and i came out to play the game and i've never won a game that i've done that 
Uh, the games that I played super late, I've always stayed up and made sure that I was like still awake and ready to go. This game I didn't, and that's the way that the cookie crumbles. So Die, great game. I do honestly believe that Die is an amazing battler, and I'm not trying to take anything away from his victory here. I'm just, I'm just a little bit like, if things had maybe gone my way, uh, if the Skarmory had pulled in the Gigalith or the Decidueye, and I could have roosted, if the Gigalith had only hit two hits on the Rock Blast instead of three, um, if, you know, the Thunderfang hadn't gotten the KO range if he's not banded, uh, if the Leaf Blade hadn't created the Slowbro, or if I'd gotten burns on the Jolteon earlier, it could have died a turn earlier and I wouldn't have had to worry about it later on taking damage on my Coco, stuff like that. So, were there hacks? Yes. Did they matter? Probably not, but I'm still going to say... Welcome to Gen 7 with Goldoa Dragon. It's probably not going to change in Gen 8. I have horrific luck. But anyway, this is it for Gen 7. I'm about to start my semester for college, for the for my getting my MBA, uh, getting my degree. So I am definitely taking off the rest of the Gen 7 life cycle. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy my streams. Hopefully you guys enjoy the end of the TBL Summer League. And hopefully you guys are uh, excited for Gen 8, which I will still be streaming and playing competitively in. I will see you guys back here later on. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing on YouTube to fill that time. I honestly have not figured it out yet. I will try to keep posting videos, but if I take a couple months, please don't be mad at me. Please don't leave me as supporters. Your support is everything to me. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all back here next time with the newest, next league, whatever that may be. Take care, everybody.